Hello everybody and welcome to a special little episode. So I have been doing a little bit of polymer clay work. Let's give you guys a better view of what I made. These little whimsical creations here as well as a little just a test tile and what I am going to be showing you guys is how I attempt to bake polymer clay in a well, uh, what are these things called? Toaster ovens. Yes, toaster oven. So what I've discovered is that the oven baking time and the toaster oven baking time aren't exactly the same. I've made some modifications to how I bake and I never quite remember exactly what works. I, I think I did make a note last time. So, but first thing, let me show you something that I have put together for my convenience. Let me scoot this over so I can show you a little better. Hopefully you guys can't hear the rumble of power tools next door. As you probably notice, I have the baking times highlighted on this little Sculpey clay sheet. So all those, they work better for oven baking times. I did actually wrote like the toaster oven, less time. What, what was that? Let me see if I can tell what my own writing says. Okay, so I did a bit of a lower temperature also for the toaster oven. Because in the past when I've tried to bake things in the toaster oven, I found they were getting scorched really easily. And so you can repaint that. <laughs> I really hope you guys can't hear the power tools going on next door. There's some landscaping happening. It's a little loud, but okay. So what I like to do first, I'm gonna get a, I'm just gonna take this little test piece first. I just use the plain clay color because I wanna make sure that what I'm doing for the baking time is gonna work out before I put these guys in. Cause I, I definitely don't want my adorable little hamster critter to end up getting scorched. Because just when you scorch it, it, it just looks terrible. You've got this beautiful clay body that just got burnt. So just want to do a test piece. I'm going to test this guy out using that time I wrote down to make sure that it works. So, so let's see if I remember how to use a toaster oven. We don't really use it for... We don't use toaster ovens for anything at all. I got one very specifically for polymer clay. You can totally use a regular oven. It's just that some people have concerns about the polymer clay fumes <laughs> tainting the... I don't know. It's just... There's... The clay fumes are kind of toxic, but I think it's only if they actually do scorch, if they start getting burnt, then it can be not the greatest thing. So some people like to have a designated toaster oven. That's why I went out and got one. Okay, let's see. How, how do we do this? We are going to set the temperature knob to the bake setting. We're on bake. We're going to rotate our timer knob clockwise to five minutes on medium, noted right here, and allow the oven to preheat. All right, and we are plugged in safely, ready to go, and we already have our, in this case, our clay placed on the multi-purpose pan. You might notice that there are some, there are some ridges here on the pan, and that can kind of be a bit of an issue if you're trying to bake a dude like like this guy here, where he kind of needs to, he needs to be flat. He doesn't, of course, you could have him just like straddling the, straddling the things. But I like to just have this layer of aluminum foil that kind of flattens thing out, things out better. You can also, if you were going to bake some clay in your regular oven, you can make a little foil tent and there's, I, I think that can also help the the clay bake a little bit better. Let's let's scoot away from the heating up oven a little bit. I was just kind of sitting right next to it. So you can make a little foil tent. I I've heard that helps it bake a little bit better. That can keep your 
questionable toxic flame, uh, clay fumes from getting into your oven that you use to make delicious cookies. So that is one option you can have. I don't really have a whole lot of vertical space in this oven. I think the small space is one of the reasons that I have to change the time and the temperature. And it could just be this oven, because I know some polymer clay, people who know more about polymer clay than I do and use this sort of setup, they, the people have noted that there's definitely a difference in what toaster oven you get. Sculpey actually made their own toaster oven at some point. I have heard it is fairly notorious for not being very consistent in terms of temperature. It would have some pretty noticeable hot spots. And I, th I think it's since been discontinued. You can probably still get it in places, but the I have heard that oven wasn't super great. And then I think with any oven, you're gonna have some weird inconsistencies. So if you were just very serious about polymer clay, then you might even want to get a little some kind of oven thermometer to check your temperatures. But we're just going to let that heat up and finish. All right, so we have gotten the little ding, and now it is time to carefully open up our oven. I haven't quite figured out if the bottom rack works better than the top or anything. It's all complete speculation. All right, so we have scooted that in there, and now let's see what my temperature was going to be. Oh, wait. I'm going to put it on 200. I hope you guys can still see what I'm doing. Let me take a look. 10 to 15. Okay, is that right? Okay, I think, I think we're good. I had to remember how to use this. I only use this for polymer clay, so every single time I have to look at our convenient instruction manual, which thankfully it does, it does warn us, caution, inside of the oven will be hot. That, that's important to say. I mean, you might not realize that an oven would get hot. <laughs> well, I suppose they need warnings for everything. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I think we are good. I am testing it out on 200 degrees, 10 to 20. I've heard some people say that with their toaster oven, they needed to go hotter. I feel like the options, I, I feel like with the test runs I've done, it's less hot and then less time. In fact, let, let's reconsult the convenience sheet over here, which I showed earlier. I am using just some basic Sculpey, so normally 15 minutes of baking per quarter inch of thickness, and for 275. So I'm dropping the temperature by, I would say, quite a bit, and then yeah, more or less the same baking time, and then with the Primo, I have a few of these. I think both of these are sculpted with Primo, so it is possible they do need some more time, but we'll have to see how that turns out. Mostly I'm worried about the temperature being too high and getting some scorching. I'll just have to watch them very carefully when they are being baked. And so we're just going to let this guy bake for a bit and we'll see how he turns out. All right, 15 minutes have elapsed and the oven did not explode. So that is a good sign. So let's pop this bad boy out of here carefully because I'm trying to hold my phone with one hand. I'm going to put it on this towel right here to protect the surface of the desk. And let's see how this guy has turned out. We can even... Well, I mean, I guess you can't do this with one hand. Okay. Let's pop him up with a spatula. Take a look at him. He's probably still very hot. Let's see. How's he look on the underneath? Well, he definitely doesn't look burnt. So, actually, let's take a look at that. 
he feels a little bit soft to me. So, perhaps, and I don't know if it doesn't seem to function the way that, say, a custard would function. Or you kind of need to take them out before they're done. Okay, I need to put the camera down. Okay. This isn't working one-handed. Let's pop this guy in just for a little bit longer, and then we'll take a look. Actually, while I'm waiting for him to finish, let me show you some of the other polymer clay things I've made. Let's scoot the towel over so I have a little more room for our camera. I might have shown this off before in a video. I don't really remember when I made him. This is a little possum. And so the main part of his body is polymer clay, but I also glued on some dryer lint to give him that nice floofy possumy look. And then I, I think these went with something else that didn't work out, but th they work well for him. He comes with some wonderful fast food accessories. And he is, he is very adorable. I also have this little guy. I had a plan to make a whole series of these. I call them nurples. And they're, they're not made... I, I didn't really plan the design out very well. Because occasionally... I, th I think you can even see he's a little butt heavy there. His, his, his booty kind of sends his balance a little bit backwards. Though his feet are nice and sturdy. So he does stand pretty well. Some of my other nurples... They just, they weren't quite as lucky. They didn't stand as well. But I initially had this whole plan that I was going to make a series of nurples. And it was going to be very wonderful, which th this guy's pretty wonderful. So at least that happened. And then I made a few other little test tiles just for practice. And most of these ones are painted with just like or they're made out of that regular clay. Actually, was this guy the plain clay also? I'm not sure. I can't tell by looking at his feet if I used the plain clay or if I just painted him. Or if I used colored clay. I think I used just the plain brown clay and painted him. And then this, this little, this whimsical, whimsical fellow. And I love how this turned out. This one. I think it's best to be seen from a variety of angles. It's a great worm. I had fun with that. And then I get some mushrooms. And I wanted it to be like, we got some that are flat, more 2D, and then they kind of, they pop up into a more three-dimensional form. So those are, those are some of the things that I've made. I have some other... Well, the more complex things I've done. I I made a centaur once, and that was he was very wonderful, and and a merman. He was also very wonderful. I'll have to show them at some point. I I do have them posted in various places, so you can see those wonderful guys. But this still has a little bit of time left, so I'll be back when it is finished. Okay, so now let's take a look at this guy that I just popped. Oh, he actually, he needed a little more time. He still did not feel quite right. And I don't know if there's like some quantifiable way to tell if your polymer clay is done, but it, it just didn't feel particularly done. And he does not look like he burns at all. I did raise the temperature a little bit for his final, his, his second five minute run. So I do have this current batch baking at, what is that? They're at 250. Hopefully that will be okay. And I have them on 15 minutes also. So fingers crossed that Penelope the hamster turns out perfect because she, she deserves to be perfect. But yeah, this guy here who is... Uh, Let's use a spatula instead of touching this hot thing with our bare hands. That seems like a good idea. So, see, he looks like he turned out pretty good. I'm going to call that a success. I 
I don't know if maybe I should try to do another run with... I'll, I'll make another test piece maybe and try to do something else with the actual recommended baking times that you're supposed to use for an actual oven, but I've done that before and it ended up really scorched and didn't quite work. So I don't know, but I, I will test that out at some point and we will see. So we're going to come back to these guys in a bit. Let me... All right, so I just took these other two guys out and I think I should call them good here. I had to get these out because this dude fell over and he's still not looking very upright. Scoot him over. You okay there, buddy? There we go. All right, so he did fall over on... Let's see. We, we don't have the greatest lighting in here, so you guys can't quite see what I'm seeing. But he does look like he's getting a little toasty in some spots. So I figured that would be a good time to pull him out. Ah, Penelope, you're, you're toasty. Spicy hamster. Let's see, how's Penelope looking? She probably actually looks better for you guys, because you can't see how... Her, uh, her blanket, this isn't from the, from the baking process, this is just from making her that, that regular colored clay got smeared onto her yellow. So she's a little dirty, but she is a baby hamster wearing her blankie over her head. Her blankie's gonna get a little bit dirty, so that, that just adds some character. You may notice that I added some wire into the clay to make her whiskers. If you're wondering what's under the blankie, she is she's simply the void. I just made her hollow so she wouldn't take quite as much clay, and I figured she'd probably be faster to bake. But I think that temperature and that time worked out better. So that was a 250 for 15 minutes. And that's what I did for these guys, and then this guy, I don't know, I think he would have been better on the higher temperature, because he did take a bit to bake. He feels okay now. I definitely, I definitely think he feels like he got baked pretty solid. These all smell really weird. It's got that weird burnt plastic polymer clay smell, so I don't know if I want my face super close to them. But you guys did see how that whole process worked and the slight weirdness that comes with baking clay in a toaster oven. And mostly I just wanted to show that process for anybody that was thinking, hey, how do you do this? Of course, I don't really know how to do it either. So I guess that isn't super helpful, but I don't know. I think it's helpful to see another person do the process and any weird things that can happen. So I do hope you guys found the video interesting and informative and thank you for watching.